Okay, here we're going to do a continuation of a previous video where we looked at the di logarithm function. So let's recall that the di logarithm function, which we'll denote by li2 of x, is given by the sum n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n squared. So obviously if you plug in x equals 1, you get the sum of the reciprocals of the squares, which we know to be equal to pi squared over 6. That's Euler's famous sum. And then also we'll want to look at this uh, companion function, L of x, which is the di logarithm evaluated at x, minus half natural log of x times natural log of 1 minus x. So in the previous video, we constructed an integral version of this sum, in some ways like a gen generating function for it. Um, a closed form, and then uh, we also derive these two identities. So we have L of x plus L of 1 minus x is pi squared over 6, and then L of x equals L of x over 1 plus x plus 1 half L of x squared. So now we're going to look at these two functional equations for two cases. The first one will be x equals 1 half. And notice uh, the first equation is really, really, really simple if x is a half. So notice we get L of half plus L of 1 minus half, which is also half, equals pi squared over 6. And that's easy to solve to get L of half equals pi squared over 12. Okay, so let's see what the other functional equation gives us. That gives us L of half equals, so let's see what this becomes, this is half over 1 plus half, so that's going to be half over 3 halves, in other words, 1 third, and then plus 1 half L of half squared, which is 1 quarter, so we get that. So, the fact that we get a one-third out of this means that maybe it'd be interesting to set x equal to one-third and see what we can get. And so, for the first functional equation, we'll get L of one-third plus L of two-thirds, that's one minus one-third, is pi squared over six. And then for the second one, we will get um, L of one-third equals, so let's calculate this. This is one-third over one plus a third. So in other words, one-third over four-thirds. So that will give us L of one-quarter plus one-half L of one-third squared, which is one-ninth. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take this equation here and this equation here, and I'll solve it for L of um, one-third. So notice I've got this one solved for L of one-third already. So for this one, I'll have L of one-third um, equals, so I'll need to move this over to the other side of the equation, and I'm going to replace L of one-half with pi squared over 12, because that's the value that we get up there. And then we're going to have this as minus one-half L of one-fourth. Okay, good. Now we're going to use the elimination method to eliminate the L of one-fourth, and we're going to do that by multiplying this equation by two and then adding these two equations. So notice that's going to give us three L of one-third equals, so that's going to be pi squared over six, and then we have L of one-fourth minus L of one-fourth, and then plus one half L of one ninth. And so now we can put that together and maybe clear the denominator, well this two from the denominator, and what we'll have is uh, six L of one third minus L of one ninth equals pi squared over six. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll move this from the bottom to the top of the board, write it in terms of this infinite sum and these logarithms, and we'll have a nice identity. Okay, so on the previous board, we found this identity. So 6 times L of 1 third minus L of 1 ninth equals pi squared over 6. But now, let's recall exactly what that is. So this L of 1 third is... Um, the di logarithm evaluated at one third minus one half natural log of one third natural log of two thirds. So that's what we get for that term. And then this L of one ninth is the di logarithm evaluated at one ninth 
minus one half natural log of one ninth, natural log of eight ninths. Okay, cool. So now putting that all together and then using the definition of the dilogarithm in terms of this infinite sum, we get the following nice identity. So we have the sum n equals one to infinity of one over three to the n times n squared. And this should have a coefficient of six out front from this coefficient of six. So that's the dilogarithm evaluated at one third. And then we're going to have this is minus the sum n equals one to infinity of one over nine to the n, n squared. So that's the dilogarithm evaluated at one ninth. So this is going to be equal to pi squared over three. And now let's move this to the other side of the equation. So that's going to be a plus six times a half, so that's going to be plus three, natural log one-third, natural log two-thirds. Great. And then minus half, natural log of one-ninth, natural log of eight-ninths. Good. So in a previous video, we argued that we had all of the nice single values for calculating um, values of the dilogarithm function. But now we can see that there are combinations of the dilogarithm function that give us these nice closed forms as well. Okay, that's a good place to end.